So this is section 17.1, which is understanding polynomial expressions. Um, so the funny thing is we've actually been kind of working with polynomials all year long, um, but now we're going to start to learn a little bit more about the different parts of them and how to classify them, how to simplify them. Um, so we're going to start with what exactly is a polynomial. So a polynomial is just an expression. So remember, an expression has no equal sign of variables and or numbers. Um, variables are letters, right? And then obviously we all know what numbers are. So within polynomials, we have um, different ways to classify these by the size. So um, if we have a monomial, um, this would just mean that it's a one-term polynomial. And so an example of a monomial would be like four, so it only has one term. Another example would be x, and another example could be 7x squared y. So that one confuses people, right, because there's multiple pieces, um, but a a term of a polynomial is separated by a plus or minus sign, and those are all connected. There's no plus or minus sign, so that would still be considered a monomial. So I'm sure you could guess a binomial is two terms, and we have different ways to classify this. So we can say, or different ways, sorry, to show this. So x plus y, that would be a binomial. Another binomial could be 8 minus p squared. So notice there are two terms. They're separated by that minus sign in the second one and the plus sign in the first one. Um, and then a trinomial is, you can guess, three terms. Think of a bicycle, right? Bicycle has two wheels, tricycle has three wheels. Um, so for an example of a trinomial, we would have 2 plus x plus y. Another example could be 3x squared minus 5x minus 4. So that's three terms, and they're separated by minus signs. Um, this is kind of funny that we have a polynomial again, um, but it's because um, when we have something that's four or more terms, we actually would just call it a polynomial. polynomial. Um, so if it's one term, it's monomial, two, binomial, three, trinomial. And then anything with four or more is going to be a polynomial. So an example of a polynomial could be 4x squared plus 2x plus 3 plus y. So notice that there are four terms. Um, so now we are going to get into classifying a polynomial. Um, so first of all, in order to classify a polynomial, we have to know what degree is. Um, this is always a little bit confusing for students, but we're going to practice. So degree is the greatest value among the sum, so think about what sum means, of the exponents, and we all know what exponents are from our last unit, of each term. Okay, so what that means is we're not going to add up all of the exponents with all of the terms. We just look at the term that has the greatest exponents, and that will be the degree. And again, this will make more sense once we look at an example. Um, and then so I have an important note here on classifying. So to classify a polynomial, you are going to state the degree. Um, and we state the degree by just saying, like, first degree, second degree, third degree, and then also type. So we have monomial, binomial, trinomial, and polynomial, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and practice that. So our first one, we have 8xy squared minus 5x cubed, y cubed, z. So looking at this, I notice that there's definitely two terms, right? Because we have this term and this term. So this would be considered a binomial, but we also have to state the degree. So what we're going to do is look at the degree of each term. So this first term, there's technically a 1 here, and we add up the exponents. So we have a 1 and a 2. So the degree of this term would be 3, and then we're going to do the same thing with the other term. We have a 3. 
we have a three, and then this would be a one. So this would be a seventh degree. So what a lot of students tend to do is then they'll add those together and say it's a 10th degree. But looking back at the definition, it's the greatest value among the sum of exponents of each term. So what we're gonna do is we just pick the greater one. So seven is bigger, so this would be a seventh degree, and then it's going to be a binomial because it's two terms, okay? And obviously the first time anything, um, anytime we do anything, it's gonna be hard, but we will get better as we go. Um, so for this next one, we're gonna do the same thing. So it looks like we have three terms. And we're gonna go ahead and find the degree of each term. So we have a second degree. This term would be eighth degree. And if we just have a number, it's actually just a zeroth degree because there's no, there's no exponent, right? Um, so in this case, we pick the one with the highest degree, which is eight. So this would be an eighth degree. And then we have to decide the size. So since there are three terms, it would be a trinomial. So eighth degree trinomial is how we would classify it. Okay, looking at the next one, um, again, we'll start the same way. We find the degree of each term. So we have a two, we have a three, we have a four, and a zero. So we pick the highest one, which would be four. So this is going to be a fourth degree. And then because it's four or more terms, this would be a fourth degree polynomial. Okay, so that is all on classifying. So now we're going to talk about writing polynomials in standard form. Um, so first of all, we need to know what standard form is. So for standard form, you are going to order the terms from greatest to least degree. And we just learned about um, degree. And we want to simplify if needed. Okay. Um, so we will be given this polynomial, for example, um, and it's not really in order. So in order to put it in standard form, we want to put the highest degree first and then go to the least degree. So we're going to kind of do what we did last time, where we find the degree of each term, and then that way we could just rearrange it. Um, so for this one, for example, um, we have this, we have four different terms here, right? So let's find the degree of each term. So this degree would be one, this would be three, and I'm looking at the exponents, this would be zero, and this would be two. So what I'm gonna do is now put that in order. So the third degree goes first, so it'd be negative four x cubed, then it would be two, so it'd be negative two x squared, then it would be one, so it'd be 20x, and then lastly, it'd be that zeroth degree, which is just our constant. So I will say a lot of students get confused on this because they wanna put like 20x first because 20 is the biggest number, but it has everything to do with those exponents. So you wanna put it in the order from the highest exponent to the lowest exponent. And then we also have a name for this negative four. So negative four is called a leading coefficient. Um, so it's, it's in the title basically, but a coefficient is a number in front of a variable. And since it's the first coefficient, it's that leading coefficient. So oftentimes they will say, um, put something in standard form and state the leading coefficient. Okay, um, let's look at our next example. So I'm kind of just underlining our terms here. It looks like we have three terms. So I wanna have put them in order of the degree. So this is the third degree, sixth degree, and then this would just be the first degree. So I know that my sixth degree would have to go first, then the third degree, and then that first degree. Okay, so um, it's now in standard form, and then my leading coefficient, well technically there is no number in front of z to the sixth, so that means it would be one, and in particular, it's actually negative one because we have that negative sign. So I'm just gonna say negative one is 
LC for leading coefficient, just to be abbreviated. So um, if we were to kind of go back and state um, what uh, type of polynomials these were, the first one would be because it is uh, third degree, it would be a third degree and then polynomial because it's four terms. This next one would be a sixth degree trinomial. Okay, simplifying a polynomial. So this is our last topic here. Um, so when we simplify a polynomial, what that actually means is just to combine like terms and then we would want to put in standard form. Sorry, combine like terms and put in standard form. And we just learned what standard form is, so we should be okay. So looking at this, I have four terms, right? We can easily see that. But we also can see that there's some terms that we can combine, meaning that they have the exact same exponent. So you only can combine them if they have the same exponent. So looking at this, I have negative 2y cubed and 2y cubed. So that actually just cancels out, right? That just becomes zero. So then I'm left with negative 8y squared and y squared. So that would be negative 7y squared. So that would be it. It's already simplified. Um, if we were to classify that just to practice, so um, we look at the degree. It's a second degree because of the exponent. And because it's only one term, it's just a monomial. So second degree monomial. All right, this next one looks a little crazy, but it's actually not too bad. So we wanna distribute that three to both parts. So it'd become three A plus three B. Then we'll distribute the six, the negative six. So it'll be negative six B, negative six C. Distribute the eight. So it'll become eight A and negative eight C. Now we are going to combine like terms. So I see we have a 3a and an 8a. So that would give us 11a. And then we also have a 3b and a negative 6b. So that would give us negative 3b. And then lastly, we have a negative 6c and a negative 8c, which would give us a negative 14c. Now this one's kind of weird because as like, all combined, all like terms are combined. However, they want us to put it in order of the highest degree to the least degree. Well, they're all degree one. So if you have something like this, where they're all the same degree, then it actually goes to putting it in alphabetical order. Um, so we already have done that. Um, so if we, if we had written negative 3b first, technically it would not be simplified because it wouldn't be in standard form. So again, if we have something like this, where it's all the same degree, then how you arrange it is then in alphabetical order. So when we classify this, this is a first degree, and then it would be a trinomial because there are three terms. All right, so this next one looks crazy, um, but it's actually not too bad. So again, we're just looking at the exponents. So I'm gonna look at p squared q cubed, and it looks like we also have a negative 4p squared q cubed. So if I have one of those and I take away 4, I now have negative 3p squared q cubed. I also have this p to the 5th q to the 4th, and I have another one, p to the 5th q to the 4th. So I'm really just looking at those numbers. So if I have negative 4 and I add 3 of them, I would have negative 1p to the 5th q to the 4th. Crazy. Okay, so now we've combined like terms, but is this in standard form? Not quite, because the degree of this term is five, and the degree of this term is nine, and we always want the highest degree first. So it would actually be negative one p to the fifth, q to the fourth first, and then negative three p squared q cubed. So now it's in standard form. If we were to classify this, um, if I were to find the degrees, we already know it, right? It's a ninth degree because that's the higher degree. And because it's two terms, it would be a binomial. Our leading coefficient here would be negative one. Okay, so feel free to go back and watch that as many times as you need. But that is our first section of this new unit.